Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at some of the guns and exotic weapons featured at the Destiny 2 gameplay reveal. Unfortunately, we were not able to look at the details of any weapon, so info is pretty limited at this time. So first I just want to talk about the general feel of the guns, and for the most part, this is the one thing you can expect not really to change at all in Destiny 2 compared to Destiny 1, the gunplay. I think Bungie has finally reined in how they want their weapons to be balanced in terms of ranges and power level, and that really shows in Destiny 2 as it is right now. A lot of the old rules, if not all of them, still apply in Destiny 2, one of those examples being the aiming versus not aiming damage penalty. In Destiny 1, if you do not aim your gun, you will suffer damage drop-off compared to when you do aim if you're out of typical range for the weapon. That rule applies in Destiny 2 as well, at least it does right now. The three exotics featured in the reveal were Sweet Business, the auto rifle minigun, Risk Runner, an arc submachine gun, and Sunshot, a solar hand cannon, if that wasn't obvious enough from the name. Sweet Business is an auto rifle minigun requiring a few shots to ramp up to speed and then it just goes crazy. The two perks we know of are Payday, large magazine and increased hip fire accuracy, and holding down the trigger increases range and rate of fire, and any ammo picked up while doing so automatically loads into the gun. This thing is just designed to burn down a big target or provide suppressing fire in PvP. It does take a while to ramp up in terms of PvP combat, so trying to start a fight with this is very hard to do when you're caught by another player, but when at full speed, just tears through people at close to close medium range. In PvE, I messed around with it during a strike for a little bit, and it felt like a usable bullet hose auto rifle, but otherwise wasn't too flashy of a weapon. It was mainly the fact that I was holding a minigun that was the fun part of the weapon at the time, but in terms of efficiency of it, seems like you really need to be hitting those crit spots for maximum damage, which isn't unexpected. Hitting non-crits just kind of felt like you were slowly plinking away at a target, but Hitting those crits just ripped through enemies. Sunshot is a hand cannon with the following perks. Sunburn, where the gun has explosive rounds and highlights targets, and targets killed by the weapon explode into solar energy. If this gun just sounds like it has explosive rounds and firefly on it, you would be correct for the most part. The solar explosion is a bit bigger than a typical firefly explosion and does not require a precision kill in order to proc it. The rate of fire is a bit faster than the other hand cannons that were available and as a result deals lower damage. It'll be a 4-5 to five shot kill in the crucible, approximately 4 shots if you hit all of your headshots. Overall this hand cannon didn't really surprise me too much, you know aesthetically it looks very very cool but for now it just was kind of a good hand cannon but there could be some other unknown perks that unlock later. Finally, there's the Risk Runner Exotic Submachine Gun, and this thing was pretty interesting. We haven't talked about submachine guns at all, really, and I might save that for another video, but at the moment, and probably forever, SMGs are basically super close to close range weapons and fall off really significantly beyond those ranges. Anyway, Risk Runner feels like a spin-off of Zalo Supercell, essentially, where part of the main bonus is whenever you take arc damage, you gain arc conductor, increasing your weapon power. Then, while arc conductor is active, any shots fired can become chain lightning and return ammo directly to the magazine. So, in this clip here, Holtzman, thank you for the footage by the way, Holtzman, his link's in the description, he starts firing, is hit by a lightning grenade, and instantly gets all of his ammo back, and you keep getting ammo back every single time you're hit by any arc damage. Doesn't matter how much, it replenishes every single time. Arc Conductor lasts 5 seconds, so that's when you really want to be pushing out damage. How much of a damage boost was it? It didn't really seem like that much, it was kind of hard to tell since SMG damage falloff is really significant. Maximum range for these things is really, really short. I wasn't able to score many clips of it either, unfortunately. 
I don't know if we should be taking increasing your weapon power literally as in it boosts your weapon damage or if it means that arc conductor is the weapon power boost itself. These specific exotics didn't really wow me that much in the build that we got to play but like I said I didn't get to play with them for a very long time and there could be more hidden perks that we just don't know about yet so take that for what you will. Otherwise, we can take a look at the legendary weapons and perks on those guns, but again, I wasn't able to inspect these guns to see what else they had on them. Scathe Lock, the auto rifle, was pretty good in this build. Came with a variation of the Persistence perk, where accuracy and stability are improved when the mag gets lower. They finally added stability to Persistence. Thank you. Nightshade was a pulse rifle with lightweight and reactive reload, both of those returning from Destiny 1. Does Not Compute was a scout rifle with single point sling. I hope they made single point sling a little more noticeable in Destiny 2. Better Devils, the hand cannon with explosive rounds, those are back as well. Most of the weapons basically felt the same in terms of how they operated in Destiny 2 compared to Destiny 1. My first thought was that they all maybe sort of felt like they had more recoil compared to Destiny 1, but I can't really verify that too much. Each weapon did very much play to a specific range, though. You knew that if you wanted to hold a certain section of the map during PvP, that you would actually need to move around where your weapon was best, and you did need to actively avoid areas where your weapon wasn't that good so that you wouldn't be caught. The Suros GJS-42 Energy Hand Cannon had two new perks. Magazine is dropped on reload but greatly increases reload speed and improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack. Magazine dropped on reload wasting bullets. So that's basically if you reload with six shots still in your gun, those six shots just completely disappeared, just wasted ammo. Not good for compulsive reloaders like myself. Phosphorus MG4, the SMG, has lightweight and a new version of Cascade. Melee kills reload a portion of the mag into your gun instead of bonus reload speed. Red Mamba 3MG SMG, lightweight and what appears to be a new hot swap. Short period of increased stability and accuracy on initial trigger pull. I'm really glad Bungie has been adding stability to all of these accuracy perks as well. Not many people are really hip firing or anything like that. So I think it's a pretty solid change to all of these accuracy perks that really nobody cared about. Urchin 3SI has lightweight and what is basically outlaw or seems like outlaw. Moving to the power weapons, the sniper was a fast rate of fire sniper that had six shots in the magazine like the old days. Glad that seems to be returning. We have Taken Knee returning as well with basically the same effect and the rapid fire attribute has spray and play built into it or at least that appears to be the case. Main ingredient, fusion rifle, comes with the precision attribute or perk, whatever this ends up being, not sure what that is just yet. Recoil pattern is more vertical, so I imagine sort of like counterbalance. Then it has crowd control on it, but it's buffed to stack up to three times. That's pretty nice, although hopefully it's not 5, 10, 15%, since it's already 15% in Destiny 1. Hopefully it's a little bit higher than that. Retro Futurist, the shotgun. It's got lightweight and cocoon. It looks like cocoon is not just for King's Fall anymore. Morrigan D with Hockey Precision gives tracking on your rockets and Snapshot. Interesting choice. This rocket's velocity was really slow at the event, but just one rocket launcher. Finally, the Nadod D grenade launcher came with Rescue Mag. Getting critically wounded automatically reloads part of the weapon. That is the underdog perk icon, but it is not the same effect. Rescue Mag in Destiny 1 actually only has a chance to reload part of the weapon, so in Destiny 2 it appears it got a buff. The previously rumored dubious volley was also featured in some screenshots and very brief moments of gameplay, but we don't really have the perk list or anything like that, so there's not much to look at other than just some quick screenshots to go ooh and ah. I mean, seems like it does a ton of damage, so... Seems pretty cool to me. 
Again, if there's one thing that didn't really need to change in Destiny 2, it was the gunplay and shooting immediately felt familiar to Destiny 1. I don't know if it's literally the exact same, but it did feel pretty close to it. So there's your first look at some of the guns of Destiny 2 and perks and stuff like that. Somewhat similar structure to Destiny 1, not hugely different, but PvP damage output has been adjusted, so hopefully some more weapons than usual can become viable. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.